organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Tonight on Daily Iowan TV, we're bringing you an inside look at a new way to get around Iowa City. And leaving it all behind. One student's story of crossing the Syrian border and becoming a student here at the University of Iowa. Lots going on tonight in Iowa City. It doesn't look like the rain out here is stopping it. Will it stick around? Stay tuned for my weather forecast from the Weather Center coming up. It's on to the next one for one Iowa football player, and it was a wet weekend for baseball. We have the latest in sports. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Andrew Roberts. And I'm Keaton Fuller. While Mondays are never easy, some in Iowa City will be starting their week off with a raise. May 1st marks a hike in Johnson County's minimum wage. It is now higher than any other county in the Midwest, up to $9.15 an hour. This is the second increase following the passing of the minimum wage ordinance last year. Following the rise, the county has reported an increase in economic activity instead of the feared business collapse. Wage is scheduled to jump again to $10.10 on January 1st. When a bar bouncer removes a patron, the bar goer usually is the most likely to be arrested. But following an incident at the Union Bar in Iowa City, 38-year-old bouncer Stanley Seto has been arrested for allegedly fracturing a patron's skull. Seto said that on April 3, 2015, the patron was on a table, which is against bar rules. The man was reportedly resisting removal, after which Seto allegedly took him to the ground. The victim has also said that he's experienced ongoing issues with vision and headaches for the last year. Uber has made its way to Iowa City. Daisy Lee takes a look at how it is going. Finally, Uber arrives in Iowa City. The Uber company began offering rides starting the past Thursday, the same day the ordinance amendment takes effect. Iowa City Council member Rockney Cole, who supported Uber entering Iowa City on last Tuesday's vote, thinks Uber provides greater access as well as greater transportation options. People weren't having access to downtown due to the lack of parking. Well, Uber frees that up and also allows them to enjoy our various entertainment options as well so they can safely ride home with Uber. There's no doubt that Uber becomes the biggest competitor of taxi company in Iowa City. Rockney says what they have to do now is trying to make a fire marketplace for both Uber and taxi. We're really excited to see Uber come to the city of Iowa City. We want to make sure that we have fair rules for everyone to participate in this marketplace. Um, we need to make sure that we have a fair pricing policy for our taxi cab companies as well. The lower riding cost two-way rating from both passengers and drivers and new payment method make Uber more popular than the traditional yellow cab. The using of Uber seems becoming a fashion trend among students. Uber is always really like an efficient and easy way to get around and it's a lot cheaper than like a normal taxi. The, the car is always nicer and the driver is always really nice. Uber is amazing. You don't need cash on you to ride it. It's on an app, on your phone, um, it's directly connected to your credit cards, whatever credit card you want to use. You can go anywhere you want just by a simple click. Request a ride, cancel a ride, or pay your ride online. All you need to do is just download a Uber app and start to click. With those hot summer days right around the corner, your favorite coffee shop may be under fire. Starbucks coffee is being sued for $5 million over the amount of ice that goes into their iced beverages. Stacy Pincus filed the 29-page complaint in Northern Illinois Federal Court in Chicago last week. The, com the complaint excuse me, argues that Starbucks customers are only getting about half of the drink that they're paying for. Pincus argues that if you order a venti ice drink, you only receive 14 fluid ounces instead of the advertised 24 fluid ounces. The rest is ice. The lawsuit filed as a class action on behalf of anyone who's ordered an ice beverage from Starbucks in the last 10 years. Well, Keaton, this time last week it was 80 degrees and my allergies were acting up. Tonight it is definitely a different story. Yeah, Andrew, Mother Nature is sure having a hard time making up her mind. Brad, does it look like we'll be seeing a change anytime soon? 
Oh, Keaton, that is a great question. Uh, I wish, I, I really do. Mediocre news coming out of the weather studio tonight. This week is looking to be mostly in the lower 60s. We might pop up to 70 degrees uh, near the end. If we look at this date last year, we had a high of 67 degrees. We're coming in around 10 degrees lower than that today. Nevertheless, let's take a deeper look into our forecast starting with Monday morning. Your Monday morning commute is looking pretty nice, 49 degrees there in the morning, uh, bumping back up to 59 in the afternoon and down to 51 in the evening. Taking a deeper look into your extended forecast for the week, Tuesday, high of 67 and low of 48. Clear skies there. Uh, back to Wednesday here with a high of 64 and low of 41. We're continuing with the trend of clear skies on Wednesday as well. Thursday bounces back up to 67 with a low of 43 and up even higher. Friday, we're going to see a high of 78, back down to 54 uh, for the low there. Saturday, a partly cloudy high of 82 and low of 58. So everything will, will get better as we head into the weekend, uh, but enjoy those lower 60 degree temperatures until Friday and Saturday. That's all I have for you tonight in weather related news. But before I toss it back to the desk, each year in the United States, approximately 70,000 foreign refugees flee their country in hopes for a better life. This past week, I had the pleasure of sitting down with one Syrian refugee at the University of Iowa and hearing more about his story. In the 2016 presidential election, immigration and asylum are buzz topics. But talking about it and living it are two different things. And for University of Iowa sophomore Mo Shakelli, it's real life. Although he may seem like a normal student to the naked eye, Mohammed Shakelli is not. Mo is a Syrian refugee, and he fled from the Syrian government in early 2012 in hopes of, of a better life. Throughout the revolution years in Syria, that eventually led me that I had to leave. The first and most dangerous step for Mo and his older brother was crossing the Syrian border to flee to Cairo. Regular drive takes two hours, but just incorporate another six hour waiting on the borders for your, for you the line and for your name to get scanned. And after that, he knew his next voyage from Cairo was to the United States. After landing on his feet and applying for asylum, Mo found himself studying at the University of Iowa. I had a very different experience, I guess. I had a 25-year-old uh, blind roommate. They both had a bit of something to teach each other about culture. I got to talk to someone I probably wouldn't ever have had the chance to talk to. Friendships aside, in the upcoming years, Mohammed plans to attend dental school. However, these plans can be derailed if his asylum papers don't come through. Yeah, most graduate programs do not accept international asylum. Mo brings up the important point and reminds us to never take our citizenship in the United States for granted. Reporting from the IMU tonight, my name is Bradley Martin, Daily Iowan TV. The end of the semester is looming without any sign of another town hall meeting with the UI president. Following UI president Bruce Harold's contentious first town hall meeting back in February, he stressed his commitment to similar question and answer sessions every few months. He had said his next town hall would be an update on UI's handling of diversity and inclusion issues and on the budget and strategic planning process. But so far, there are no plans of this coming into action. Harold is scheduled for discussions on campus this upcoming week, but topics covered will be social justice and the process of, for developing quicker strategic plans for the university. We had great seats outside of the Daily Iowa TV studio on Sunday for a local bike race. The sixth annual Chris Lillig Memorial Cup is an omnium competition for racers competing in Saturday's road race, a time trial, and the 39th annual Old Capital Bike Race. The old capital race took racers right in front of the studio on Madison Street in Iowa City Sunday. It included nine races divided by age group and gender, six of which had cash prizes. The Memorial Cup is in remembrance of Christopher Lillig, who was hit and killed by a drunk driver while biking on Highway 923 in Iowa City in 1995. Well, Keaton, it was a big weekend for some Hawkeye athletes as there were a few champions in the Drake re Relays, excuse me, as well as a former Iowa football player who was drafted to the NFL. 
Yeah, Andrew, it definitely made for a busy weekend of Hawkeye athletics. For more, let's toss it over to Alyssa in the sports studio. Alyssa? Thanks, guys. It was a wet weekend for spring sports both in Des Moines and Iowa City, but it was all sunshine for one Hawkeye football player. With the 248th pick of the NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts selected Iowa's senior offensive lineman Austin Blythe. He's the 15th Hawkeye offensive lineman taken in the last 14 NFL drafts. Blythe is now the 59th player coached by Kirk Ferentz at the University of Iowa to be selected in the NFL Draft. Now moving to the baseball diamond where the Iowa baseball team hosted Kansas State this weekend and started the pace for the tight three-game series with a close game on Friday night. Baseball reporter Jody Maloney was at Dwayne Banks Field and has more. With an even record of 19 and 19 going into Friday's game against the Wildcats, the Iowa baseball team came away from the low scoring game frustrated by their performance. Yeah, it definitely was a frustrating night. Um, you know, CJ pitched well enough to win. Um, you know, like you said, we gave them one in the first, and then, um, you know, they end up getting a two out bunt and a double uh, to, to score another run. With a final score of three to two, the Hawkeyes couldn't seem to finish their comeback despite getting eight hits in the matchup. No, just not getting that, that key hit. Um, I mean, we're getting people on base. We just need that person to step up um, and get that, that runner in. Iowa was just 1 for 16 with runners on base and 0 for 12 with runners in scoring position on Friday night. And um, you know we had we had our chances, we had runners in scoring position, and um, you know we had our guys up too, and they just didn't come through. It was just a night where we we didn't get the hit. While first baseman Tyler Payton went 4 for 5 at the plate on Friday, it wasn't until the sixth inning that Iowa finally got on the scoreboard with a home run from designated hitter Daniel Aaron Moriel. It's a nine inning game, it's a grind. Uh, you gotta find ways to uh, get guys home when you have the opportunities. But if there's one thing that Iowa took away from the battle, it's that they have to keep fighting. Oh, uh, just maybe gotta fight a little more. You know, we just gotta fight harder. Uh, just be ready to play, like I said earlier, and um, you know, come out and take our chances when they're there. This has been Jordan Maloney with Daily Iowan TV Sports. After a weather delay, Saturday's game was postponed and the Hawkeye Wildcats series continued with a doubleheader on Sunday. We'll have more on how the series played out on Monday's show. The rain may have dampened the baseball team's bats, but the weather did not stop Iowa's track and field team as they dominated the Drake Relays this weekend, bringing home three champions. Monty Watts won the women's 800 meter on Friday and then earned her second Drake Relays flag at the, as the 800 meter anchor leg on the women's sprint medley relay. Joining the Dream Team was Lake Kwanzaa, Alexis Guster, and Montella Holder. The team's time of 3 minutes 52 seconds ranks third on Iowa's all-time list. Winning back-to-back -back medley relays, the men's team followed the women's lead, winning Iowa's fifth men's sprint medley relay title. The foursome of Vinny Saucer Jr., Christian Barceret, Marie Harris, and Carter Lilly won the sprint medley relay by a 4.52 second margin over Illinois, bringing home Iowa's 53rd Drake Relays title. The Hawks swept the men's and women's sprint medley relays, but it was not all teamwork for Iowa as four Hawks recorded top three finishes in individual events on Saturday. Freshman Noah Larson ran the second fastest time in the men's 400 meter hurdles. Junior All-American Aaron Mallett finished third in the men's 110 meter hurdle. Junior Venue Saucer Jr. also took home a bronze medal in the men's 100 meters. And redshirt freshman Reno Tufoli placed third in men's shot put. With 11 points, the Hawkeye men tied for 8th overall, and the women's squad put up 16 points to take home 6th place. Next up, the Hawks will head to Lincoln, Nebraska for the Big Ten Championships on May 13th. That's all we have for tonight in sports. Check us out tomorrow night when we recap baseball's doubleheader. Back to you guys at the desk. May 1st is May Day and is often celebrated as a way to welcome spring, but it wasn't always that way. The celebration of spring first came from medieval England where people would go out in the country or woods and gather flowers to bring in the May. The Celtics celebrated Beltane Usher in the start of the summer. Their celebrations revolved around dancing around bonfires and burning witches in effigy. In many countries, May 1st is also Labor Day. On the same day in 1886, many unions across the United States went on strike to demand the eight-hour workday we've come to know. That's all we have for you tonight on Daily Iowan TV. Check us out on dailyiowan.com for all the latest news. 
I'm Keaton Fuller. And I'm Andrew Roberts. Have a good night.